Hiya, it's Hannah the Artisan Duck. I am back with another polymer clay tutorial today. This one uh, involves texture sheets and alcohol ink, so if you like a little bit of a mess, this one is definitely for you. Um, kind of makes me think of batik fabric. I've added a little bit of um, the, uh, what's it called? The metallic alcohol inks to help set it all off. So, let's get started. I've got here just some plain white clay and I've rolled this through on a number four. I've, I've done it this thickness because I want it thin enough that I can press in, but I don't want to may have it so thin that I actually end up breaking the clay into my texture sheet. And uh, this is the texture sheet. I will have uh, descriptions of everything I've used below and I'll link everything, hopefully, um, in my blog post. So you can check out my blog post if you want to see more. So I'm going to choose where I want to put it, I think down here somewhere, like that. I'm just going to use my fingertips and press it in quite firmly all the way over to try and get as good an impression as possible. And I have to say my clay releases quite easily from this texture sheet, so I, I haven't needed to put a resist on, but if you were using a texture sheet that the clay got stuck in, you could give it a little spray of water before you start, not too much, just a little bit um, before you start and that'll help release it. I've always used a little bit of water for release and it's always been okay. Right, there we go. I think I've pressed that down as much as I can. There we go. Can you see, you can just about see the impression of the um, texture sheet through the clay and then really carefully going to peel it off there we go Ta -da! there's our textured piece I'm gonna pop that down and I've done it quite a few times with um, purples yeah, I've done a little bit of um, mica powder on top of that one. This one's got the metallic ink. But I, so I thought for the tutorial to try it out, I would have a go at using these two. So I've got um, some bright yellow pinata inks and rainforest green. And then I have got the rich gold. I do have also have orange if I feel the need, but... I'm not sure once the colour's mixed whether I'll need that. I'm also going to be using some of this Pinata colour extender, which just helps the colour spread a little more um, and spread over the clay. So this is messy. I'm going to, I've put this on a sort of a non-stick craft sheet. It's like a little, I don't know what you'd describe it as. I bought this years ago. So uh, I'll zoom you in a bit. I'm just going to start off with getting my colour extender and just put a few drops all over the clay and this is just going to help that ink to flow. I'm going to start with the yellow because it's my lightest colour. Take the lid off and I'm going to drop a bit yellow all over like that. Some of that's gone into the um, colour extender, some of it hasn't. And pop that to one side. I've now got um, just a really naff old craft paintbrush. And I'm just going to use that just to help spread this colour out a little bit. Like so. doesn't have to be perfect at all, I just want it sitting in all those little textured pieces. I, just, I don't usually worry about cleaning my paintbrush off too much because it's going to continue to get messy. There we go. And now I'm taking the green like that and I'm just going to drop the green on. Looks like it's leaking. Right, so I'll just drop the green on. This is a very dark colour, so I'm going to be a little bit more sparing with this one. I'm going to allow it to mix in with the yellow. I'll just put a 
little bit down there, put that to one side. And then use my paintbrush again, I'm just going to move it around. Now at this point, if you need a bit more of that colour extender, you can add some. A lot of this is just playing around until you find the right solution for you. Gosh, look at those colours. And I might add a bit of green in there because there's a lot of yellow. I say there is no real rhyme or reason. It's, it's down to what you personally like as a finished result. And we're just going to keep on filling in um, the areas. And um, where the green meets the yellow, you get a totally different green than the, the sections of green that you dropped in. I almost, it kind of looks a bit tie-dye at this point, which is um, totally cool and a bit of a throwback to my childhood. There we go. I don't want to overwork it and that green is starting to dominate. So I'll just move my paintbrush to one side and to soak up any extra ink that's just sitting there, I'm just going to get some kitchen towel and just gently press it. There we go, you can see, get an impression of it on the kitchen towel. There we go, and there is our coloured textured clay. Right, I'm just going to clean off my paintbrush a little bit and I'll be back in a second. Right, I've got now got my pinata gold and I'm going to put a drop or so of it on the side. We can add more if we need to. And then I'm going to go in with my colour extender and just put a drop in, just helps it move around the clay again a little bit better. Right, and I've dipped my paintbrush into it, I'm just making sure it's not too loaded, but there is a lot, and I'm just going to start tapping it over the clay to highlight it. I'm just going to zoom you in a little bit, I hope you can see it wrong way. It just adds a little bit There we go, it just adds some lovely shimmer and if your original ink is still a little wet it'll move. Mix with the colours you've already put down. You can always add a touch more of the colour extender if you like. In some cases I've added a lot, lot more of the metallic. In other cases I've been a much more sparing with it. I quite like both results. It, it just depends what you want at the time. You can see I'm not being overly fussy with this. I'm just rubbing it all over. And it just highlights those areas that are popping out. Helps the texture sheet, texture on the sheet of clay stick out. So gently see if I can pick that up to show you. There you go. It's all done. The shimmer, it's a little bit hard to see on the camera, but it's most definitely there and it's absolutely stunning. Right, so now I'm going to pop this down and totally leave it to dry. I don't want to touch it now until my no more no longer get messy because we need to cut it out as one of the next stages and you don't want your cutters getting too messy. All right, so I shall see you in a bit. Right, I'm back. It's some time later, so I'm hoping it's not too dark because it's starting to get dark outside. Here's my clay. It's all dry. And that gold gives it a lovely shimmer. Right, here I've got some Fimo in gold and I've rolled it out on a number seven, so it's quite thin on my pest machine and I'm just going to pop my green clay on right on top of my gold and the um, let me zoom you in once the clay is dry with the alcohol inks on it sort of acts as a bit of a barrier so if you press it it doesn't just squash flat so you can go around and just press your clay onto your gold. I mean, don't really hammer it, but you certainly need to make sure that the two pieces are sticking like that. Now I'm going to go and cut off using my 
sharp blade. I'm going to cut off the excess. We're going to use this in a minute. So that's one. And now all I need to do is choose which shapes I want to cut um, and try and get as much out of this sheet as I can. So I'll get that done and then I'll be back. There we go. There's all my pieces cut and you can see I've squeezed them together as best I can. This is pretty much, there's a bit there, this is the only little bit of clay that I've got left. So you can see it makes really good use of the clay that you've worked with. Right, so I'm just going to pick these up, make sure my blade is clean, which this one's not. There we go, and just gently get those up. See, so you've got the nice gold backing on there. And I've chosen the gold because I used the gold um, alcohol inks. I'm just going to move that there. Um. Right, we'll just work with one of the shapes for a minute so I can show you how I want to finish them off. Um, and I think I'll go with this one. So first things first, you're going to want to clean up any edges. So any loose bits of clay from where you've cut it. You want the back of it to be as neat as you can. And you see, so there's a few little bits and pieces. If you find any air bubbles in the back, you can just take a craft knife and just pop where the air bubble is and then use your finger to smooth the hole back over. You know, squeeze the air out and then use your finger to um, smooth the hole out. But just try and neaten that edge up as best you can because we're gonna add a border to this in a second and it's just easier if this is neat. Here we go, it's as neat as it can get, I think. Just going to use some clay to clean up my space. And I always keep some scrap clay to one side that I just use. This was white, but over the course of working, it's become like this off cream. So there's our shape. And I'm going to show you what we're going to do. I've got one here that I've done in purple, and I've just wrapped some silver around it just to set it all nicely. So that's what we're going to do next. Right, I've rolled out more of the gold clay. It's actually the, the clay we cut off from around the edge. And this is on a number seven as well. So I'm gonna use this to wrap around. To begin with, I'm gonna cut a straight edge. I've made sure it's long enough to go the whole way around the shape, which it most definitely is. Um, like that. And then I need to cut a strip that's the same width as my pendant. So I'm going to cut a, as straight an edge as I can, like that. And then I'm going to pop my pendant on just to see how thick it needs to be, which is kind of about there. There you go. I've pushed my blade up to the back of the pendant and made sure it's relatively straight. I'm just going to cut down and pull up. All right, now that should be roughly, it's never perfect, so that's roughly the same width as my pendant. I'm going to peel it off my tile and I'm going to start by positioning it on the top, let's see if we can zoom you in a bit, see if it will focus for me. There you go, can you see, I've just positioned that right at the top of the pendant, and then I'm going to use the gold clay to wrap around the edge. Just 
like that. There we go. That's all wrapped round, and we're just going to take a craft blade and cut at the top where the two pieces start to overlap. There we go, so that's cut off, and then we're just going to press that down and then use your fingers to gently just move that clay to smooth the edge out and eventually it will blend together. There we go, you can see that's pretty much smoothed out. Now I'm going to make sure this is clean, just like that. And I'm going to turn my clay upside down, like that. And now I'm going to start, and you can see it's a little bit um, deeper than it needed to be, so I'm just going to go around and start smoothing it down with my finger, brushing it in, and keep pushing it onto the sides as well. It might want to lift, but it shouldn't be a problem. You're going to keep rubbing it until the joins have blended in. And it's never perfect, not with me anyway. What I'd probably te be tempted to do is just to come back once it's um, been in the oven and just sand, lightly sand the back of the pendant. I wouldn't like submerge it in water as you're doing it. I would just get your sandpaper wet and just gently go over the back of it. And that will also help with any imperfections. Yeah, just keep going around. You can start to see the improvements already. I might have got a little air bubble there, so I just take my craft knife, pop it, and then just literally go around and squeeze it, just make sure there's no air stuck in there, and then the same process, just go in all different directions to smooth the clay over, and that little hole will start to disappear. There you go, it's gone. Can't even see where I've done it, and that is how you get rid of any air bubbles. So I'm going to finish this up and then I'll be back. There we go. It's all been smoothed out. I'm going to pop um, a jump ring in the top so we can hang on a pendant and then I'm going to pop it in the oven. I have a whole uh, tutorial on how to do that so I shall link that down in the description and round about somewhere. But yeah, there we go. I shall be back when that's all done. Right, here we are. These have all been varnished now and I've finished some of them into finished uh, items of jewellery. So this is one of the green pendants that we made. And then I've got this one here, which I haven't made into jewellery yet because I'm planning to bead weave around that one and make a, a beaded bezel for it, which because I thought that would be a fun project. The earrings. And for the earrings, I actually, you can see, I... Um, I've textured around them with a, a ball tool. I actually gave them a dusting of a gold perfect pearls as well, just to make that one extra shiny. Not sure why I did that, but I just thought it was a, a nice finish. And then I have the purple ones that I worked for in the blog post, which I will link um, in the description. And I, I, I really love how this purple set came out. It's got a little bit of silver on it. Um, I call it purple, it's actually pink and blue so they mix and make purple but there, there we go I shall pop um, in the description below affiliate links for the products I've used to make the green set, the links for the purple set will be in the blog post until next time I shall say goodbye please like and subscribe and all that really embarrassing stuff to say alright, bye